My name is Kathleen May and I am the recipient of an amazing GoFundMe and already it's only been out for a day and I've gotten um, significant donations and many of them and it's leaving my circle and it's amazing to see. Thank you so much for that. I want to tell you a little bit about myself, about this journey and what some of the money is going to be going toward. Because of this illness and because of everything that's happened and the multiple surgeries that I've had to have and also being diagnosed with um, cancer associated thrombosis which is blood clots, um, I have been not able to work for, for a significant amount of time um, physically and, and mentally and emotionally because this has been an extremely traumatizing event as I'm sure people can imagine. Um, I was only 33 years old when I had to have a hysterectomy and that put me into surgical menopause which has a host of medical side effects with it that uh, you know I knew about going into. Luckily I did have that information but I still had to make the decision. We're back. <laughs> Lovely, beautiful sunshine only like an hour later. I want to talk to you a little bit about the journey of the past year. I had a lot of, of gynecological issues, but it led me to um, an exploratory surgery that, that became an emergency surgery um, because one of my ovaries actually ruptured and so that was removed and then a few months after that I had to have a complete hysterectomy and they did find cancer in my in my ovaries and in my uh, uterine lining as well and you know all the doctors thought that was very strange and you know I'm so young and I'm healthy and I didn't have any risk factor so you know where is this coming from well they did genetic testing and then found out that I have Lynch syndrome which is a cluster of cancers including gyno cancer but mostly colorectal cancer therefore for the rest of my life I will need to have a colonoscopy and an endoscopy uh, every year. This whole journey has meant that I have um, I've had to take time off of work from the women's shelter where I love to work and I've actually decided to take a leave from that job so that I can really focus on my healing and my well-being and and just doing everything that I can to take care of this precious body um, while it's while it's struggling, um, and you know different parts of me are struggling. The way that this money will help and has already helped is like first and foremost is the peace of mind of I'm going to be okay while I take this time to heal, and I don't have to worry about how am I going to pay for the gas money to, to get me to Barry in Toronto because the deeper I get into my diagnoses the farther south I seem to be going. And I want to acknowledge that I live in one of the most beautiful places in the world. I live in in Ontario, Canada. I have free health care. That means that most of my prescriptions were covered, my surgeries were covered, um, cancer treatments as the as they are prescribed by the doctors, the, what they consider to be best practices, so chemo and radiation are covered. I don't pay out of pocket for those things. Um, but there's a lot of space in between funding, but depending on what your circumstances are, it does fall short, and that's very much happening. There are also a lot of alternative treatments and holistic treatments that I'm really interested in taking because that's the kind of person I am. I did what the doctors recommended, but you know, in terms of radiation and chemotherapy. But there are other alternatives out there that I want to explore. And unfortunately, nothing like that is covered. So a lot of this money will go toward me being able to explore natural earth-based ways to, um, to make my body as healthy and as resilient as possible to this cancer and to any recurrences that could happen. And another piece is that I live, I live at home with my mom. She is working so much and so hard to to make sure that we are okay. I can help my mom out so that maybe she doesn't have to accept every single shift that comes her way just to make sure that we're all right. Hi. Hi. This is Milwaukee. This is Milwaukee. This is my girlfriend's dog, but she's actually my best buddy too. So a little bit more about me before this diagnosis. I 
was, like I said, working in a women's shelter. That was my dream job. And I was volunteering a ton with survivors of sexual um, abuse because that my passion is working with women and working in healing. I was so immersed in the world of healing and helping, but it was very externally focused. And although I was on my own journey of healing as well, I never realized how much of my story was connected with my body until my body changed in a way that I needed to adapt to very quickly. And I'm still learning all of that. That is an ongoing process and will be forever. I do creative writing and I also explore memoir in creative ways. And just I write about whatever I'm interested in and I want to do. So this, this process, this chunk of time that I will be de dedicating to healing, I will also be working on not just blogging about this process, which I have already been doing, but trying to develop it into a cohesive story for people to learn from, relate to, connect with, um, and maybe, you know, connect with me through that because there's so much that's happened that I have learned so much about that I want to share and encourage. I want to make sure that, you know, young women don't ignore their period issues when when things start to go wrong that you advocate for yourself that you do your own research that you bring people with you every moment like my partner was with me every moment until covid had her sitting in the car on speakerphone listening to, in on my appointments and supporting me in that way like you have to build your people around you and i want to just maybe share how i did that and and how i and how i struggle because i so struggled it has been very in interesting to be on the receiving end of such generosity. I've been very blessed in my life. Throughout this process, people have done, have gone over, bent over backwards for me to, to support me through this. Um, but it is, it is really hard to, to need to ask for help, to receive help, to not feel not have any of the complicated emotions around this like of guilt and shame and I don't deserve this and I'm not good enough and but the truth is I know that I know that this money is going to good use I know what it is like to to give and I know how good that, that feels so I can I'm only resting in the hope that everyone who donates feels really really good about that every donation that I get it is another is another sense of of relief and and certainty around what, the, what my world is going to look like for the next little while because there's been so much uncertainty. This gives me that again. And I am so grateful for that. <laughs> because it is the people <laughs> that make it worth being here anyway. <laughs> and I want to stay. <laughs> so thank you. <sighs> thank you.